It's the Naked Truth. Raw and uncensored adult chat with the stars of Just for Fans as we get personal. Bedroom stories, sex tips, and more. Close the door, turn down the lights, and turn up the volume. It's time for the Naked Truth. And jazz hands! <laughs> Hello, Just for Fanners. A kiss makes your day, but anal makes your whole week. Get it? Wah, wah. Okay. <laughs> this is The Naked Truth, the official Just for Fans podcast, where nothing is off limits, except, of course, my age. Uh, on this episode, we go deep and get down with our guests, Falcon Exclusives, Cade Maddox and Devin Franco. I'm your host, Alexander Rodriguez, queen of the podcast, and my sidekick, of course, to, to my right, director of events for Just for Fans, Mr. Anthony John. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> wow, my voice is like up here. You're like, uh, hey. <laughs> hey, Anthony. Yes. Did you know that my penis was in the Guinness Book World of Records? You don't say. Mm-hmm. Until the librarian told me to take it out. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, well. Okay. What is going on? <laughs> this is so bad. So bad. I'm just setting the bar low, so all we can only weekend, go higher. All weekend. That's what you got. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, like no, oh, the best no. joke ever. Okay. What is going on with just for fans and content during this whole COVID situation? Ah, uh, what isn't? It's uh, it's going great. I mean, we need a pandemic every once every few months, I would assume. It's pretty good for, it's pretty good for business. For content building sites. No, it, we, we have been doing great. I, mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but thousands of more have joined. I'll say that. I'm starting. To, I, I think I'm going to do my own just for fans. Everybody is. Now. Yes, yeah. you should. <laughs> what do you think my, my theme would be? Like, like what would what, what my gimmick be? Uh, glamour Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna copyright that glamour bear. She farts glitter. <laughs> just show That's your feet. I'm a so lady. Wild. Anyway, hello to our audience around the nation on every major podcast platform. You can also watch us on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire on out at dot TV app. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at just for fan site. And whether you uh, are a content creator or a fan, sign up at the award-winning just for dot fan site. Get your profile set up today. Uh, just for fans has been setting the standard for connecting adult stars and their fans. Also gives back to the community, FYI. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's formally introduce our guest. Mr. Cade Maddox is one of the most popular and successful performers in the business. Originally from the Gulf of Coast of Mississippi, by the way. Uh, he entered the industry in 2017, had his breakout year in 2018, appearing in scenes for all kinds of studios. Of course, we know now he is a Falcon exclusive. Exclusive. He's been nominated for Best Newcomer and Hottest Newcomer in the Fan Awards at the Gay Vienna Awards, picked up a whopping eight nominations at last year's Grabby Awards, Ooh. as well as nominations for the Cybersocket Awards at Gay Vienna Awards. He's as much a gentleman at the dinner table as he is in the bedroom. He thanks his poor bottoms he destroys. Please welcome Mr. Cade Maddox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also joining us today, Mr. Devin Franco, originally from New Mexico, by the way. Very experienced talent who delivers amazing sexual and acting performance in everything that he does. And according to the Grabby Awards and to fans around the globe, he is the hottest bottom. Ooh. Who knows what to pay attention to first, his back or his front? Either way, you're going to win. And little known facts, Devin has ridden his bicycle across the state of Iowa five times. And he also built his own violin. Iowa. Iowa. A uh, bunch of corn. <laughs> uh, the corn. Butter, the butter I didn't eat no corn. <laughs> he also graduated college with a creative writing degree. All I want him to write is his phone number down. Please welcome Mr. Devin Franco. My third. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe your lips, girl. Wipe your lips. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a little. You're getting I was. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's like, oh my god. We're, we're gonna film a movie here called The Podcast. Coming, coming to Falcon. Um, okay, we're going to start with a little hot topic just to get us a little riled up. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just going to start easy. You know, this whole uh, last six months, socially and politically, has been so, so interesting. Um, and a handful of adult film stars have been canceled from contracts, endorsements, digital platforms for racist or hateful speech comments. Um, just for fans actually took a stand and deactivated someone's account for being overtly racist. Um, we know that people have to be held accountable for their actions and their speech, but is there a time that we welcome them back into the fold? Do they apologize, get a time out, and then do they get to start working again? Uh, what's, what's your opinion? I know, Cade, you were kind of close friends with, with somebody. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll say his name. I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Don't want any suicides. Um, but uh, w what's your take on on that? Do you like? He was always a very controversial friend. Um, but I just based our relationship based off how he treated me. Um, it wasn't really. I never really was put in a position like I was this time, where he just made just like a disgusting comment like that. Um, it made me unfollow him. 
I don't know how I feel about just deleting his profile. I think because people pay for that, and if they want to pay for that, then give them the option to. But I don't think about just, like, totally deleting him from the site because, I mean, I don't know. But the thing is, is like Just for Fans has been supporting like BLM. They've given thousands of dollars to BLM. Uh, I just added another letter because I'm so excited. Um, so and, and also, Just for Fans didn't donate uh, the money the models donated. Right, because the models give the option, they give the to, option donate. To, yeah. to donate. But yeah, on um, our behalf. So. so and do we reward somebody's behavior like that by still allowing them to make money? Um, that's I mean that's kind of. Did you text him and be like, "What the hell is going on?" I haven't talked to him since. It's such a touchy situation, right. and it's like we're watching people, you know, fuck for a living. Um, does politics even even play in that? I mean, I, I think that we do need to make people, like, kind of question their perspective and when they do say things that are offensive like that to kind of, like, make them go, like, well, hmm, like, why are people responding this way? I don't think it's necessarily right to completely out someone Sorry. from their job and, like, have no way of making a living um because of a mistake that they might have made like i mean we definitely need to like there needs to be some sort of repercussion for these people and making these offensive comments or having these really terrible world views um but i think that it's only going to make them dig in deeper to their those awful opinions if we force them out of the group or kind of like make their lives diffi more difficult because of that at the end um, of the day, it's a subscription site, so you have full control whether you subscribe to that or you don't. You don't have to pay for his page. So let's say you were to get you, uh, like when studio films are, are back filming, and you find out that your scene partner is somebody that has been a wild racist or has uh, trans shamed or fat shamed or, or something. What happens when you get cast with somebody like that? Um, I mean, I, I a lot of times, you know, I just made a, a fan video recently with somebody where people called me out for working with him, and I didn't even realize he was controversial, um, which is kind of frustrating on my part because I don't go in and vet every single part of everyone's background before I work with them. I'm just well, who has time? And now content. we're looking at yeah, tweets exactly. from like ten years ago. It's like, bitch, I can only scroll three times and I'm out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and I'm not paying attention to like people's political views really. I'm paying attention to like what's hot and what they're doing in porn. <clears throat> and if I want to be a part of that or have that be a part of like my my image. But um I think that yeah, there definitely needs to be a conversation on it and but I think like completely keeping people out of it, out of porn because of it, or, or just like making it as hard as possible for people to have a job uh, is the wrong way to go about it. It's not the right way to have a discussion. That's an interesting take on it because I'm, I'm Latino, so we'll hold a grudge until I'm in like the tomb, right? right? And so I'm just like, cancel, cancel, cancel. But we also know how quickly the LGBT community and fans can switch, especially keyboard warriors is what I call them, when they're hiding behind their keyboards and they can just whatever. We get over things pretty fast. We forget pretty fast, especially when, when sex is involved. We're so turned on by somebody. I mean, it kind of all kind of goes out the window. And when I'm watching porn, I'm not necessarily thinking about – everything that they've said, you know, I'm right. kind of in, in, in the moment. I mean, it's it's such a weird thing. What do you think? Well, I mean, it, ultimately, yes, I, I believe we do have to hold people to account uh, to an extent. I mean, something like like Just Your Fans, we're, we we try so hard to be inclusive. We try so hard to to push, to, to break some boundaries and let, let everyone feel comfortable because it's a platform. When we won Best Site at, at the, the Grabbies a couple of years ago, um, up against Falcon and they get sort of like all these huge things. There's just their fans, which is primarily amateurs. They're just, you know, on the same playing field, same level as their biggest porn stars. Um, are, you know, so it's very difficult to, to, to maintain a balance, but ultimately they're all independent contractors. They come on, they, they play. We have very few rules, um, but ultimately, you know, we have to hold him accountable, and, and he can find money elsewhere. And he is—he has a beautiful article out right now, blaming it on meth. So you could read it if you like. He's so methy. Um, so methy. Um, <laughs> Maybe that'll know, be the title I've of his like comeback film. I've seen a meth head, you know, so chew, a, chew a battery down to the, to the dub. So I mean, they're crazy. I mean, they can say, say mean things, but yeah, meth doesn't make you racist. Your meth yeah, it, out the racist. Right, yeah, right. Well, it's like so, when you get really drunk, like you and I both know, like liquid, liquid 
truth is, is, is what they call it. There's a, a small part of that. Of course, it could be exacerbated and exaggerated under influence. And this is not to make slight of anybody dealing with addiction, right. by the way. I mean, it's very right. serious. Um, no, it is. And, and but, you know, the, the, the individuals that we're talking about, I mean, they're, they were never this. They're not vanilla people. They're they're very. They've always been controversial. He's I mean, controversial Billy has always has said always things. pushed the envelope he's, a and, little, little, and little. And he has you know body shamed, and he has said mean things, and he's talked about how PMP is a good thing, and he's 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 always been that guy, and and that's who he is. You know, God bless, and I'm sure he'll make lots of money elsewhere. He's just not going to make it on Just for Friends. But, you know, There's to your sites. point, it's like it's a subscription. So, like, some people pee and pee, and they do it successfully on the weekends, and then they're back at work Monday through Friday. And it's like, if that works for them, and they have great sex, and they're having a good time, and they're not hurting anybody, eh, it's not my business. I, I definitely don't think P and P should be, like, promoted. No. Or, or, or <laughs> no. When I first I'm not, I don't pee and pee. I just want to know. When I first met him, and um, when I was living in D.C., and he kind of, like, um, he kind of like took me under and like showed me the ropes of everything. Um, he wasn't, he was a totally different, well, he wasn't totally different. He still was very controversial, but it was, I think before the addiction kicked, I don't know if it kicked back in or it kicked in, but he wasn't on it when I first met him in DC, but I saw as time, like months went by, I was like, okay, like just the videos that he was putting out and the things very that he odd. was doing, I was like, okay, there's like something very different. And it, it was it was kind of this negative energy because, you know, I, I watch all y'all's content. Like, I'm a professional. <laughs> um, and the content started to change. It didn't have that sexy energy. And it dark. was mm. it was dark and it yeah. was not something that I was attracted to. So I unsubscribed and, and I stopped watching. Um, and, you know, during this whole period of time, we've all been kind of pushed in our corners as to take a side, take a side. So people that want to cause controversy will say, you want me to take a side? Here's my side, whether it's fully who they are or not. OK, let's talk about you guys. Now, yeah, now, dark, now that right we're away. Dark, you went dark. dark. Right um, away. I'm like, <laughs> Guinness Book of World Records of that? <laughs> what I love about both of your content, and believe me, I have logged many hours watching your content. You um, <laughs> I'm calluses. Did you one see that one guy on his TikTok, the by the way? <laughs> so this guy on TikTok this morning, his video's going viral. He showed his arms before COVID and after COVID. His left arm is literally has a bicep on it. And the other arm, it's 100% real. And he's like, Porn up. <laughs> That's awesome. But what I love about both of your content, whether it's a studio film, the chemistry that you have and the energy that you put in, no matter, and you've you've both been with a wide variety of, of partners in studio films, um, and there's this ke uh, chemistry and this energy, like you are in it. There's no distraction, and I, I believe. And then now with your uh, personal content on Just for Fans, you know, we get to see you in a more intimate level, and it's still that same kind of chemistry. You know, it's not like I'm sure it's acting per se, but um, and I'm sure there's differences with studio and, and creating your own content. But how how do you create that chemistry? Because I'm sure there's times that you're cast with somebody that is not your ideal. Well, it's in my contract now that I have to approve my scene partners. Oh, OK. I did um, enough for my first like year or two to where I felt like, OK, I just want to get my name out there. I took jobs that maybe I wouldn't have taken or should have asked for more money for. Um, in the first year or so just to get my name out there and just get me exposed and so I felt like okay I'm just doing this until I'm doing what I can do until I can do what I want to do hmm. and then when I signed with Falcon I was like okay I have to approve my scene partners and so now it's just not even a question of like oh, I get there and I, I'm not into my scene partner it's we settle all that before like we get into that position so those yeah. early days though what what did you do to kind of compensate for right <laughs> I was just thinking, okay, uh, this is good money. You're just going to go out here and you're just going to fuck. <laughs> Close <laughs> your eyes. Pro. Yeah. A hole's a hole. He's a pro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd say this a uh, professional at the end of the day. Um, but, yeah, you just – or you just imagine somebody else that you're there. You like, just get it over with. I mean, that's why you win the awards because I have no poker face whatsoever. I mean, even across the bar, if I don't like somebody, I'm like, Rah! You know, it's just, it's just like not happening. Uh, how, how do you handle it? Um, I mean, I I think that uh, every – I mean, there's definitely not every person that I work with is someone that I have the best chemistry with. But I try to see, you know, the sexy that they try and bring. Like, everyone's got, you know, their own sex appeal. And their oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. And so, like, I, I <laughs> like, focus in on that and, and kind of, like, bring that out of them. And then, because when – you make them feel sexy, then they want to be sexy, and it, the chemistry is is better for the for the scene. That's like the Doctor Phil answer. It's like it feels good, and and I I, I love that. So, Kate, do you ever bottom in real life? 
No. I've tried Ever. It before, but no. You have tried. It's not my thing. I tried it and I thought, well, maybe I'm not gay. Aww. And then I realized I am gay. I just like to fuck dudes in the ass. Hey, we all need tops there, Bear Bree. Yeah, and there's so <laughs> I live in LA. There's so many bottles. Like, Literally grinder. It's like they need a different would, grinder why for Why in the world would I try to do something that I don't enjoy? Yeah. Right. Okay. Believe it or not, I have never bombed it in my entire life and I will never because I it just no. And like the more I get into it, the more the little older I get, I'm like, oh, I enjoy this so much more. Like I don't have to do half the work that they have to do. Like I to me, like a bottom is so much more of a man than like the top. Like doing everything they have to do, they're starving themselves on fucking uh, shoot days. Like then taking a. Fucking, That's why I'm not a bottom. I gotta say, I, I do not eat. starve myself on shoot days. <laughs> then like <laughs> home surprise bottom. But a lot of them do, and I'll be sitting there eating. <laughs> and no, yeah, a lot of a bottom. <laughs> it's a lot of preparation. Yeah, um, I gotta say, as someone <laughs> as an experienced bottom, a lot of bottoms like put way too much effort and work and much more than they need to. But I mean, it is definitely like a learning experience as far as learning how to clean out and, and get to the point where you can like be done in 30 minutes and re- ready for the next six oh, yeah. hours. I think a lot of them <laughs> is just the fear of like getting on set, having this big dick sho- shoved up your ass and then that like accident. shitting on right. in front of like six people. There, there's definitely like, a fine balance though i want to see the bloopers no, from I, some of these films when i worked at falcon years ago and and we there would always be this there would be like that new bottom you know and he's there and he's so excited and they brought him like big star and they got rocco in. i'm like oh god it's not gonna look good and they'll go and they'll clean every like every break i'm gonna go touch up and i'm like oh and it gets you can like, over no, oh is, absolutely is, is oh, yeah oh the and water it happens, can get stuck happens, up there or it dries you out yeah no it, it just I, and, and and it then it just I don't want to talk well, detail, but it, it becomes a waterfall. It's exactly. not really. At the end of the like day, you're doing, an asshole. You can but, expect much. Like but, sometimes and talk about I'll, look at them and I'll just be like, we told you to no, stop. No. What are you doing? You've gone through eight fleets. What right. are you doing? You know, so it's, it's fleet week. I always tell bottoms. Just reuse the fleet. It's plastic. What's wrong with you? I always tell bottoms <laughs> when they're douching not to hold on to the water. Let it just rinse out. Oh, if yes, you hold on to the water, that's when it will get there and come out later and surprise you. just hold his hands. Here's Devin. He's going to hold your hand through this one. you ever want me to hold your hand I mean, I'm, 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 I'm totally for that. He would be the one to uh, talk yeah. to. About <laughs> I, I need to have like, like a very song zen, you're beautiful too. Like, we all have beautiful. training, like douching training video. That, that's actually a really that good idea for good just idea. for fans. You could do some special content how to prepare. Exactly. Because you know, you'd save a lot of a lot yeah, I think that would of horrible be experiences. I, I, no, honestly, a lot of people need to see that. Yeah. Especially, you know, we have uh, people that are coming out of the closet younger and they're experimenting sexually younger. I didn't have gay sex till after college. My first time freaked me out if we would have had videos or some way. And this is what I love about sex is becoming more mainstream, especially with people at home. People are just admitting, yeah, I watch porn now. I know who the porn stars are. Thank you, Melania. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was more Finally. stormy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but Melania's sure. right behind. She's no, spreading COVID like, and her legs. She was a naked model. I'm like, so? That's, that's right, great. Exactly. Good for her. I, I don't know why people She's also shame now the first woman, that. so now like, you could do it too. I only Melania. shame her because she hates Christmas. Who hates Christmas? She Melania hate Christmas. just made She's whoring decorating. popular. Yeah, she did. And uh, acceptable, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Devin, what I love about you in your bottoming scenes, you know, uh, I have seen you in very submissive positions, environments what? where there's like a whole crowd of people and it's just you, but Been you there. still maintain uh, kind of that dominant energy in the room, even though you're the one that's being uh, used, so to speak. Right. There's this dichotomy that you have in your in your performances that that I think makes watching it so attractive because you do play with that kind of power. How do you how do you maintain that power as a bottom? Um, well, I I definitely notice that I tend to when especially when I go to like a sex party or something, I tend to be like. It it turns into from a party to a show usually <laughs> because everyone wants to like turn around and watch what's going on. Yeah. Um. But I I mean I think it's because I I am so submissive and I love it and I I I fully fall into that mindset when I'm in that situation. Um. And I think that like people who see me don't necessarily expect something like that from, very true. from me yep. when they that's see very true. And, and, and I and love so that I, yeah exactly yep. and I, that's really what I go for I love go, being like the masculine all American boy presenting like clean cut and then just being dirty slutty raw nasty like sub bottom like and just turning all that like 
idea of masculinity on its head and, it. and just yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> no and, and both of you have that energy like Kate like you're the gentleman you know going to the opera in, in a tuxedo or like working in a farm you know uh, the gentleman please and thank you letting a lady walk on the elevator first and I love this dichotomy of it's like a gentleman out in the streets and you know alpha uh, yeah, and then it being so sexual. I think that's where the, the excitement comes from. It's like, you know, kind of reveal, reveal, r- reveal. Um, Devin was actually my first fisting scene. He taught me how to fist. That it, is next on my list to talk about, by the way. <laughs> that was one of my like, favorite Like, I was scenes. literally learning as we were filming. I was like, is this supposed to be out here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when my rosebud oh, rose no. came out, and he's like, oh my it's God. scary, though, that? at first. <laughs> um, okay, so so let's talk about... Uh, fisting, because I have a question for you, because I watched that scene that you guys had. I have, as much as I love watching all kinds of sex, I still am not quite there with, with fisting. Yeah. I want to know from a bottom's point of view and from a top's point of view, what what you get from the experience of, of fisting. And before you start, I just want to say hi to my mom. Hi, mom. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> hi, I made pump. it. <laughs> you might want to cut this segment out uh, right here. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, well, well, for fisting for me is one of the most uh, intensely pleasurable sexual experiences I I can enjoy. Like, it's it's it feels so good, and it's just like it's such a crazy connection with the top too, because like you really like usually when it's a really good session, like you're really connected. Like, there's a lot of eye contact. You're focused on like kind of what each other's doing. Um, and so it's just like, I don't know, there's a lot of raw energy and passion that's going on behind it, but also it's just like feels amazing. Like, so it's this it's the actual physical sensation because yeah. it's probably your G spot is probably being stretched oh, and absolutely. touched and, and all of that. Usually that thumb the knuckle is right on the prostate and it's just like I that makes me come hands free so many times. Like, really? Yeah. Really? Um <laughs> I mean, and if you're not into it, then say you're not it into was, it. Uh, I mean, it was okay to experience. Um, I just get more pleasure out of sticking my dick in you. I mean, that makes sense. You know, like I just have more feeling As a there. Top, yeah. Like it's uh, for me, it was. It's. I mean, it was okay. It was kind of hot in a way, like to do something different. Um, but I'd rather just stick my dick in him. Yeah, I, I'd <laughs> rather you stick your dick in me too if you want. Is it like? <laughs> but, but there's there's some almost some there's a level of trust there. Yes. That I think, you know, having only been the top in this situation. You, you fisted? Yeah. Oh, hi. And uh, <laughs> girl party's called Pig Daddy. Um, <laughs> there's, and I even said, you have like dad hands. Like your hands are bigger than my face. No, but they, you know, and you, there is a level of trust and connection that that I think is hotter than just about anything else. The fact that someone is allowing this and you could it could go wrong. You can really hurt someone if you don't know what they're you're doing or they don't know what they're doing. And I think that they're. I don't know. It like brings sex to this. It's not something you just do it quick. I mean, you got well, most like, of my I mean, bottoms. I'm not looking to build a trust or connection. <laughs> I don't even want to know their fucking name. I just want to fuck them and then yeah. be gone. Like I don't even yeah. know most of their names most of the time. See, I mm. I love that. I've gotten towards that with like if you're single and it's casual sex and all that. I think that's hot. It's like I, I don't, we don't need small. Like when people come over from a grinder hookup and they want to like chat and ask you about like, the photo. You're ruining on the, this moment for me. Just yeah, shut right. up and put your ass up. Like, <laughs> who told you to take the blindfold off? <laughs> yeah, that's so much <laughs> like, awesome. I wish don't more top to tell that to me. Actually, <laughs> don't that's tell hot. Me your name to you. ask for your ID. <laughs> you know, like for the to post the video. Kate Maddox for president. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, put your ass up. <laughs> I'd vote for 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 that. Honestly, he'll hold the elevator door. For you too. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's talk about you guys filming for, uh, for for just for fans. You know, now uh, without the studios doing a lot of films right now, you get to really create the f- scenarios that you want. You get to work with the people that that you want. Um, how how has your content changed, and how have you changed the most from filming this personal content? I mean, I, there's a lot more freedom in what you can do and show, and and also just like the energy and the passion, the chemistry between is usually a lot better because there's not all the stop and going. Uh, it's usually just documented as it's happening. Um, whereas in like studio porn, there's a lot of like stopping and going. You have to build the energy back up, um, and there's lots of cutting, and and um, so it's not always the it's not as great. Or, or and and a lot of times you get held back 
or at least I do, of what I'm allowed to say or or like if I'm showing too much rosebud or, you know. So And, and, and uh, in my regular scene work, I can just like go all out, be as piggy and slutty as I want. And that's actually what people really want to see me do anyway. Like that's what they know me for is like – um, and so uh, I, I have a lot of fun doing it. I, I would never be able to, like, I do a lot of kinky and fetishy stuff. On I know. My, on Sometimes my... I'm like, oh, we'll fast forward to that. <laughs> it <laughs> makes me feel so vanilla. Well. <laughs> I feel so vanilla compared to Devin. Like... I never would be able to do any of that stuff if I, if I didn't have my own fan sites. And so... Well, I, and I think that's a benefit of like just for fans because it's not like studios have like their theme where the videos kind of all look the same and they're all kind of the, the same kind of theme. And if you want something a little bit hardcore, you have to go to a different studio or a different spinoff. Whereas just for fans, depending if you want vanilla and just like boom, boom, you got that if you want something like that. And I love that there's elements of some uh, of the content of just for fans looks so like amateur, which is hot because you're like peering through a peephole. That's what I right. think is hot about it. Like yeah. you're in the same room, like when we're just going to do a random hookup, right? You right. just like feel like you're in the room with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you're a boy. But like some of the adult stars have now become so tech savvy because they've had to that now it's like its own produced movie. I wonder what the future of studio films is going to look like once things are back to normal. Because if you're making more money at home filming your own stuff that you want to film, why would you need to go to a studio? I mean, well, I mean, I see studio as like a good, like paid promotional work, really. Yeah. Um, and and like it's also it's two different kinds of genres, it's really. It's like YouTube and Netflix. Yeah. Like, um, you go to YouTube for one kind of entertainment compared to to Netflix. Some people like the storyline, the production. Yeah, um, exactly. All of that. Yeah. Me personally, I don't. I don't like the studio. Like, um. Well, I, mean, I appreciate <laughs> the I appreciate, I appreciate the excuse studio. Them. Back <laughs> I appreciate the studio, and I appreciate what it does for me as far as the marketing, and um, it it gets like you it makes you feel like a star, and you're not just the next just for fans person, you know. Like um, it puts you on DVDs, on calendars, like right. people recognize uh, appearances. you. So it does that aspect. Um, but some people like the whole production. Some people like to just feel like they're in the room with you while you're fucking. I I do like sometimes. Oh. Oh, wait, we gotta stop. Okay, so that's our mid-show sex trivia. We're gonna play a little sex trivia. See how much you know about sex, all right? Oh. So at the end of the episode, we're gonna have a winner of this episode, um, and we're gonna start with our little sex trivia. So if you get the answer wrong, you have to remove an article of clothing. Wah, wah! Okay? And headphones don't count, by the way. Okay, sex quiz. What does penis captivist mean? A, it's when a man's erect penis would return to its flaccid state. B, it's when two people get stuck together during sex. Or C, it's when a man's penis becomes inverted due to extreme cold. Penis captiv captivus. Captivus. Do they ring a bell? Or do they just scream it out? No, 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 because uh, they, they could have the, the, the same I, answer. I guess I would go with the cold one. The cold one? Okay. Yeah. Um, can you say the can you say the three one? Yes, it's when a man's erect penis would return to its flaccid state. Okay. It's when two people get stuck together during sex. It's when a man's penis becomes inverted due to extreme cold. I'm penis captivus. C. The the cold. Yeah. You are both wrong. You have to remove a piece of clothing. <laughs> it is when two people get stuck together during sex. It's a it's a I thing. Was I was a dog. I, the I, glands yeah, exactly. dogs do that, right? They get yeah. knotted. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah. The glands sorry, will yarch. like spasm and it will hold on until it's relaxed, <laughs> really? and it can last sometimes last up to an hour. Wait, is that gay all. sex or women's like vagina? It's, uh, the well. vagina is the most common, but can also happen with a man will like get like a Charlie horse and it you just know, clench. I actually clenched I, when I said that. Before that, I thought I was tight. Now I'm like, <laughs> girl, that seat is in fear. Okay, you have to remove a piece of clothing. <laughs> what? Gentleman's never, choice. Well, it's mostly to do with the vagina. That's why we don't have, <laughs> don't have the right. Oh, answer we, for that. he started off with the shirt. Yeah. Oh my lord. Nipples are looking good. <laughs> and and Kate took. Oh, Kate's gonna, oh, oh. He took two. No, I'm gonna do my jacket back on because oh, I'm a little chilly. Oh, oh, it's a little nipply in here. Happy, happy holidays. It's very nipply. Yeah. Okay, next question. What is the average erect penis circumference? Two point five to three point seven inches. Three point eight to four point seven inches. Four point seven to five point one inches. And this is the circumference. So all the way around. Yes. The girth. Yes. Uh, when it's erect, average. Two point five to three point seven. Or 3.8 to 4.7, or 4.7 to 5.1. This I, is average around the globe. I feel really good about myself right now. I I'm go with say the average <laughs> is the first one. I would say B. I feel like the average is that first one is too. Small. You are both wrong. It is C, 4.7 really? to 5.1. Wow. 
So you have I to mean, ruin other pizza code. As a as a bottom, very slutty bottom, I have to disagree with that. There's not that many average. I'm just talking about science. <laughs> I can, we know how popular science is right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, one more piece of clothing. All I right. love this game. <laughs> I've had my pants off the whole time, so. I don't... Oh, me in the eye. <laughs> oh. My shoes. Ah, shoes. shoes. <laughs> okay, so if the you shoes... take off your shoes, you have to put your feet on the table. Ooh, okay. God, those feet. <laughs> feet yeah. is another thing I just don't get. Like, really? leave your socks and shoes on. I think getting older, I'm appreciating feet. Oh, it's kind of no. weird. I don't know where oh. it came from. Oh, <laughs> see how nice his feet are? <laughs> Oh, Devin. You think about oh, look, look at those oh. oh, we got the Calvin's coming. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. I hope we get more wrong answers. Okay. What percentage of men in the world are circumcised? A, 30%, B, 40%, or C, 60%? It's only Americans that do I'm gonna it. I'm going to say 30. So I, yeah, 30%. You are both correct. Wah, wah. But it's mm. one for it one. It should be so less still than no, no that. Uh, 30 yeah. minutes of moderate sexual intercourse can burn approximately how many calories? Ooh. A, 200, B, 400, or C, 500? For the top this or is, bottom? Th this <laughs> is, uh, it's, it's moderate sex. So by yourself. 400? <laughs> say B. Uh... 400. You are both incorrect. The uh -oh. answer is only 200. That's it? Oh, yeah. Shit. Well, that's really oh. shitty. I'm like, they've never had caveman except. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm just going to do a sock. Cause, uh, okay. Oh, I've actually never seen a coyote jock in the like in the flesh. Is I'm coyote always, like I a new brand? I see it all the time on Instagram. Yeah. It's always there. Where yeah, are they based out of? I have no idea, but they send me some for... That's for nice. Let's see. Oh, my Show the camera. Goodness. He's just like Aww. always just like. See? It's <laughs> great. God, I love Devin. Oh, all right. So, uh, but the score is is even. It's one to one. Um, we're going to do something at the end of the show that, that you could possibly win this episode. Um, okay. I want to talk a little bit more. Um, Devin, I know um, that you were raised kind of in a Mormon environment. Yeah. Um, what's your relationship like <laughs> with spirituality and religion today? Or is, is there anything? Yeah. I mean, uh, I would say that I'm spiritual but i'm not religious in any sense i i think religion in general like if if everyone has to like agree on the same set of principle like nothing no, nothing fits everybody you know um there's no one size fits all i'm uh, taking this all sexually by the way continue Devin. <laughs> <laughs> i already said fisting is spiritual it's a connection but very it much and it will spiritual. fit nothing fits but everything fits <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I'd say I'm I'm spiritual, like uh like I, I guess kind of more on the agnostic side because like yeah. I don't know and I never will claim to actually know anything. But um you know I feel like uh, I feel I feel spiritual things. Um I think that there's probably something beyond just this dimension that we see. So he's so adorable. Like he's just <laughs> so adorable. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kate, we're going to talk a little about love and dating. Uh, we we know that that you are in in a relationship. Um, how does that work? I've always wanted to know from like when you're getting ready to go to set, like you're made breakfast, your lunch is packed. Have a good day, honey. Like, how does that go? Or do you just not discuss it? Or like when you come home at night, how did the shoot go? How did that go? Or is your it just jealousy and yeah. all that stuff? Um, yeah. it's, um, he's mm -hmm. actually very supportive. He's like my biggest fan. Um, he'll be like. You need to shoot an OnlyFans video. When's the last time you posted an OnlyFans video? You need to go shoot an OnlyFans video. We love that. Um, just for fans. Just for fans video. When yes. I'm getting ready to go, because <laughs> um, lately we've been having to drive to Palm Springs to film. So I'll leave like the night before I shoot, and he'll like help me pack all of my stuff. Like, all right, you got your everything you need. Yeah. Now, is there sex happening outside the relationship? Ah, relationship outside of set. It's a personal um, question he's asking us. What do you mean, like, uh, like, are are you allowed, like, since you know, uh, sex is for work, sex is sex. Can can you can you have sex with somebody, if uh, with somebody else, if you if even if you're not filming or like when you're not filming? Is usually it an open it's relationship? Only that... usually it's only for like I'm only looking for sex if I'm looking to film or <laughs> or getting paid. Um, there's been times where we've been at circuit parties or something, and we'll be like, oh, he's cute. We'll bring him home. Oh, that's fine. And, I mean, that's um, not cheating if it's like but a third. No, it's only uh, it's usually only like uh, when I'm filming. Like I have a grinder and I use the grinder for filming. Like it specifically says on my grinder, looking to film for OnlyFans. It, you know, it's funny because I was on Grinder and you were on Grinder. I was like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Like it was just so friendly yeah. and like 
yeah, there you go. I was like, is this really Kate? Because there's a lot of imposters out there oh, too. Yeah. I'm sure oh, yeah. both you guys. Are I don't bad. even get on those apps anymore. I get reported it's all the time. Yeah. I had to write Grinder it's on like it's Twitter me. because I get reported all the time for cat like people think that I'm faking. And they had to like go like deep into the system and unlock my account because it had been locked for they thought I was impersonating like impersonating myself. <laughs> Um, Kate, what are your top tips on how to be a top top? Tip top top. Tip top. Um, um, I like to check in with my bottom, you know, make sure they're okay. Um, uh, check on them a lot through the, cause like if you're hurting them, you just shove it in or like, it's not, you don't have a fun session, you know, like I like them to enjoy it just as much as I'm enjoying it. Um, uh, so be attentive of your bottom. Um. I don't know how to. <laughs> I th- 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 those are pretty good tips. Think, like at the bottom, that that's what you would want. I would. Assume. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't have any tips. It's not like it's a. That's pretty good. I think like we talked about. I think a lot of the work is is on the bottom to like you know. Yeah, just be. A I mean, I'm looking at you like like all the work is on the bottom <laughs> up until you actually are doing the fucking, and then the top is doing all the work. Girl, I've seen you do some when work, I, by when the I, way. Like, when I do some top thing, I, I, I have a new appreciation and respect for oh, yeah. for the top in, Cardio, in scenes sure. because yeah, I get out of breath really quick when I when I'm doing a topping scene. Now it's funny. <laughs> like, not only do you have a gorgeous behind, you also have a gorgeous front. Do you wish that you were cast more in topping scenes? Or are you, are you happy? With- I, I I prefer bottoming. I love bottoming. That's where I feel like I perform the best and do the best and, and kind of feel more like not necessarily just comfortable, but like that's where I have the most fun. I do love topping and enjoy it. It's not as fun and like, but it, for me when I'm topping, I enjoy like the pleasure that I'm giving to the bottom. Um, and uh, like knowing that I'm making hot porn also is like... I'll, a turn on as well but like i i don't care about topping as much i have been topping more lately though in my scenes i I noticed (laughs) (laughs) um now uh, debunk a myth that uh a a bottom who bottoms a lot especially dp or you know uh gang bangs or fisting that all of a sudden they have this like loose bottom now all of a sudden that's just ready to fall out Mm -hmm. does somebody's hole get looser is there a way to tighten it up i mean is that a myth i don't know I, I, it's really genetics, I, I say, because there's guys that uh, who could get fucked, like and and try and get fisted all their life and never get a fist in, um, and their hole will always kind of like bounce back to being like really tight. Um, and some guys just don't have like the bone structure to mm-hmm. take like a big fist or something. So yeah, the smaller guys, yeah, they yeah, just, like, tighten right back up. That's why you see me with a lot of twinks. They just tighten right back up. Just... Right. Exactly. And I actually get told a lot that like my hole tightens up pretty quickly or, or bounces right back after a DP or fisting. Are there exercises? Um, I don't like, do any the exercises and things like that. I, I'm doing it right like, now. I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze a dick while there's one in me, but like oh. it's not like I'm doing that all day, it. every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for the hand. <laughs> it's one of my tricks I like to do, and the top is always like... Oh. <laughs> you still got it yeah but I, I i mean i have definitely gotten looser or like it's it's definitely like um more loose but it's also like i have more control over it i've gained more like muscle control and it's stuff. a muscle yeah exactly and so like i can eat, like push it open and it can look like it's gaping and hanging out or i can just like have it be closed up and it looks like a uh, sweet little boy pussy, like <laughs> <laughs> you are the Meryl Streep of uh, of, of of porn. Like you know, <laughs> any character, uh, th- that's what I'm. How are you guys the most different um, on your everyday life as compared to what we see on on camera? Or is there a, a difference? Uh, I mean, like I I feel like I'm pretty boring outside of porn. Like you, you are very quiet. Like I've met you a few times, and you're just like, "Oh shucks." <laughs> but then, like in the bedroom, you're like, "Well, here I am, boys." Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Are Are you having as much sex in your personal life as we think you are? Uh, I I think that I don't think I am having as much sex as everyone else thinks that I am. I do have a lot of sex still. Um, I don't know how much sex more sex I'm having off camera really than. On yeah, camera. I think that's I tend more to just a myth. like I think people that's the unfortunate thing that I always see with models 
is I always felt bad because they have this image and people actually believe that they literally are just walk around having sex all the time and they'll have sex with anybody, you know? Yeah, and so oh, it's like they insane. all feel that's like, like, oh, oh I have you. a chance that's with the Kate worst. or this. Right. I'm like, no, porn star. Right. <laughs> they're <laughs> you know, the worst. Is they're like, everybody they're has approachable, a, but they're not fuckable. <laughs> you know? And so they're like, oh, I have a just for fans. We should film. Mm. Mm. Right. Go to my red man. I like to, like you said, I'm very (laughs) into my scenes, and so like it has to be some type of attraction, like. You know, I just want it can't like, just be making content for the sake of making content. Yeah, yeah. What, what, like, what do you then want? It won't be good content. Exactly. When you're picking your own partners, what are you looking for the most? Like, what, what turns you on the most? What do you want to film with the most? Um, I like in shape. Um, I like guys that are smaller than me. I don't like if you're taller than me or bigger than me. I don't like that. Is there it's anybody big, taller than you? Um, there's some taller than me guys. Yeah, there's lots. Of <laughs> I see him right there. Oh, hey. okay. <laughs> I was like, what's their number? Um, JJ Knight's peeking in. Uh, <laughs> well, he's peeking in, and then he's peeking in. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I can deal with a little hair, but I don't like a lot of hair. Um, those are just my preferences. Nice booty is great. Uh, that's like a number one. Now, I have seen your ass totally smooth, and I've seen it with like a little scruff, but when you're totally smooth, there's not like ingrown hairs. There's like none of that going on. What tips do you have on having a smooth booty? Face well, I mean, I I unfortunately have a big, nasty, ingrown hair right on the middle inside of my crack right now. It's so unfortunate. Oh, oh, it's I in the go. worst Real spot. life? What's that? Real life? <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, for the most part, oh, oh, no. I actually, just, I took a needle to it last night, and it's it's <laughs> gone. The inflammation has gone down. It's on its way out now. But I had to re- like, I, it was just so too. awkward. I was in the oh. mirror, like trying to find the spot with the needle. It was like, oh. but I got it. <laughs> I've never understood, him. like, like on, on some of the studio <laughs> porn, I've never understood if somebody has a breakout. Why don't they just put like some cover girl over it? Like I never understood. Oh, why I do. That I put. I use makeup. Usually, Maybe that's why and, I've never I just, seen that. I was. I just did a scene in Palm Springs this weekend, and we had to keep every time we to put took a cut we had to put makeup on it because it was we were doing this dp scene and they were like zooming in right on it and they were like yeah we got to get that covered because I, I, I usually they will that. start off with covering it but it gets, it gets so wet. sweaty so and right wet, like it just like rubs off like within a few minutes and and usually like in most cases like on my body like that they wouldn't they'll just like film around it but this one was like right where somewhere where they couldn't film around it so every time they cut they would just like correct it a little bit more um but usually like i've i've done laser hair removal uh i've done five sessions i still got hair um but it grows in uh less thick and, and so i don't have as many uh ingrown hairs as i used to but i i do i'll keep it trimmed and, and as well Okay, so that, you heard the, the red, red alert, so we're going to see who won this episode. We're going to do a little rapid fire. It was a I need you to get your, 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 your timer out. You have a minute oh. 30 to answer as many rapid fire questions as you can. Who oh. wants to go first? Whoever answers the most is going to be the winner of today's episode. Um, are they the same questions? No. Okay. Well, what then am I doing? First. Timer? <laughs> There's you? no point in it. Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. A timer? Yeah, so a minute 30. Okay. Let us know when to go. This is why I came, by the way. Just so I'm so glad I brought my, my jacket timer. in here. It's 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 cold. It's my cold heart. It's like blowing okay. snowballs. Ready? Maybe. Let us know when. All right. Oh, I'm ready. Go. Celebrity you'd like to fuck. Rapid fire. Hello. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, I am a celebrity. <laughs> Ellen. Okay. Uh, fav- <laughs> favorite genre of, of porn. Um, jock twink. Please. Watch more or less porn uh, during COVID. Um, I don't really watch porn. Worst date. Um, I can't say his name, but I took him to a restaurant and I didn't realize how loud he was. It was very embarrassing. Sorry. Most embarrassing <laughs> song on on your playlist. <laughs> uh, most embarrassing song. Uh, Wanna be by Spice Girls. Okay. What is your worst habit? Um, farting. In public. <laughs> porn star you could see yourself dating. Um. myself <laughs> i don't know i tried dating a porn star and that just really didn't work out for me okay uh worst scene from your career um it was probably my first one that i did for uh, men and they hired this gay for pay guy and he it was just a fucking mess like it was a shitty fucking mess what well, would your drag name be i've never thought about that uh go yeah i know you got one i know you have one for me what is it i don't 
Big Frida. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's already taken. Strangest thing you've bought online during COVID? Um, I just bought a penis pump. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Porn star with the uh, worst breath. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Past. <laughs> Most romantic thing you've done for somebody. I think it's just the worst. It just stopped. Worst <laughs> okay, oh, that was over. a minute 30. Oh, okay. Yes. What happened? Why didn't it make a noise? No. Oh. You did 11 questions. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Can, can you do this? <laughs> I got this. Oh, my Lord. Oh, God. Okay, are you ready, Mr. Devin Franco? Yes, I think so. Oh. What is your favorite <laughs> Christmas song? Jingle Bells. What TV character are you most like? Oh, God. Uh, Tina from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how cool are you? Like 11. What is the most interesting thing you have with you right now? Uh, my cock cage. Oh. oh. We didn't even get there. Do you believe in UFOs? Uh, yes. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. What are you most afraid of? Uh, people. On a scale of 1 to 10, how good of a dancer are you? Like, negative 1. <laughs> if you could buy yourself anything right now, what would it be? Um, a bike. Okay. Least favorite food? Oh, uh, shredded coconut. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, no. Favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. What makes you instantly horny? Um, I don't know. Like Hi. just being dominated. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever slept with somebody out of pity? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so sad. I'm gonna slip you my number. Uh, have you ever fucked a celebrity? Uh, y yes. Oh, strangest thing you have bought online? Oh, um, uh, during this pandemic, um, gosh, uh, I bought these like uh, flexing Pokemon like statue things. They're like oh all beefy. God. It's like all the starter Pokemon, and they're like all muscular and flexing. I haven't gotten them yet, but <laughs> I'm looking forward to them. He bought them from Wish. They're gonna show up like all melted candles. Probably. <laughs> he bought a cock cage too. I did. Well, That's this one crazy. I didn't buy. Uh, have you ever hooked we're up? Done. Oh, that was it. Yes. Uh, one, two. Three, I was paying four, attention. Five. His were so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Devin Franco, you are the winner of today's episode. Sorry, Kate. What did you get? Uh, you're gonna have to send him something from Just for Fans. All right. We'll send him <laughs> something. <laughs> okay. Tell tell our audience where they can find you and follow you on Just for Fans. You can find me on Falcon Naked Sword and Just for Fans dot com slash Cade Maddox with three X's. And your um, Instagram. Uh, Instagram is K double underscore Maddox because my last one was deleted, so I had to put two double underscores in there. No. <laughs> double it, underscore. Yeah. Um, Instagram is very like homophobic. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It, it, what's it is. going on lately? Yeah. Oh God. Uh, and where can uh, people find you? Just four dot fans forward slash Devin Franco XXX. Mm -hmm. I'm also exclusive with Falcon, so you can find me on those sites. Uh, Devin underscore Franco for Instagram, and then Twitter is Devin Franco XXX. I love it. And where can people find you, girl? Me? Yes. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Instagram is uh, at uh, Mr. Mr. Anthony John, and uh, I'm uh, um, yeah, I'm uh, admin. On just your fans, just for his back, back So admin. sexy, yeah. you go, admin. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram at Alexander's on Air. I don't have a just for fans, but after today, I mean, I have so many ideas. Fisting caged uh, glitter bear. Okay, uh, <laughs> make sure you like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening or watching. Sign up for your free account at just for dot fans and be a part of all this adult goodness for free uh, that is being produced with fans in mind. Stay healthy, stay sexy. Until next time. Thank you. That has been another episode of The Naked Truth, the official podcast for Just For Fans. Sign up for your free account at justfor.fans and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Just For Fansite. You never know what's going to happen on The Naked Truth.